So let's go ahead and do an example. Number one reads, the average height of men at LBCC is 69 inches with a standard deviation of three inches. Greg believes that the mean is different from 69 inches. He samples 50 male students and found an average of 69.6 inches. Use the traditional method to test his claim. Use a significance level of alpha equals 0.01. Okay, so going back now that we've kind of read the whole sentence and we know what's going on, re-dissecting it from the beginning, it says the average height of men. So average is mu in this case because it's our population standard deviation. Uh, so let's see, let's go back. So the average height of men is 69 inches with a standard deviation, so sigma of three inches. Greg believes that the mean is different, so not equal to 69 inches. He samples 50 male students, so 50 is n, our sample size, and he found an average of 69.6. So this average is x bar because it's the average based on the sample, so it's a sample average. Use the traditional method to test his claim. Okay, so now we're ready to go ahead and find h naught and h1. The key was the sentence that read, the mean height is different from 69 inches. So we're studying a mean and we're focused on it being different or not equal to 69 inches. So in this case, we'd write mu equals 69 and mu not equal to 69 for our null and alternate, alternate hypothesis. And as always, I like to mark a little C next to the claim so it'll help me for the final conclusion. Now let's begin by finding the test statistic and remember, I need to use my test statistic formula, which I've listed here, but won't always be listed for you. So for my test statistic, z equals, first thing is I need is x bar, and we decided that the sample average was 69.6. Then I need to subtract the population average. And there's two ways to get that. Up here, we said that mu is 69. The other thing, instead of rereading the sentence, is H naught only has equal to. So this means that we could always look to H naught for the value, and in this case, 69. Now we need to divide by sigma, and again, we identified sigma in the question. So we're dividing by three, and that number needs to be divided by the square root of the sample size, which we'd identified to be 50. Now, if you can enter all of this into your calculator at once, that would be great, and it prevents round off error. Here's my attempt at showing you how to do that. So I'm gonna use the parentheses button, 69.6 minus 69, the parentheses button, the divided button, the parentheses button to start the denominator, three divided by the square root. Um, you don't really need an end parenthesis, so I left it off, but you know, I do need to finish with the equals. And so I ended up getting 141.4, and I'll go ahead and list that into my answer box. And so now I'm ready to move on and find my critical value. So for the critical value, I'd run out of room, so I've moved over here for space. We start off with the significance level, and we're given that alpha equals 0.01. So the next thing you want to decide is do you have a one or two tail test? We have a two tail test, so we'll need to cut alpha in half. How do I know we have a two tail test? Correct, since we have not equals two, then it's not a left tail test, it's not a right tail test, therefore it's a two tail test and we will need to cut alpha in half. So 0.01 divided by 2 is 0 0.005. Now remember, this is the area I want in the two tails of my curve. So I need to go into the middle of the table because I need to get a z-score, which goes on the edge of my graph and the edge of the table. And in row negative 2.5, when I look for 005, I find an asterisk telling me that I want to use negative 2.575 because 005 is a tie between 0051 and 0049. 
So I'm going to come over to my critical value line, and since it's a two-tailed test and I have two critical values that are mirror images of each other, it's plus or minus 2.575. And just to kind of give you the picture, here's my bell-shaped curve with my test statistic, sorry, critical values of positive and negative 2.575 with the area of 0 0.005 in each tail for a combined area of 0 0.01, my significance level. Now we decide whether we reject or fail to reject H0. So the way we do this is based on our test statistic. My test statistic is 1.41. So if the number line had zero in the middle of the curve, 1.41 is in between zero and positive 2.575. The rule is, if the test statistic falls in the critical region, the critical region is your two shaded tails for this problem, and my test statistic did not, then I'm going to fail to reject H0. Um, a couple other ways I've heard it read is, um, if he's shady, reject him, but our number is not in the shady region. Or I kind of like to use the analogy of money works better for people. And if I told you you cannot spend more than $2 and 58 cents rounding and you said oh I found something that only costs a dollar 41 am I going to reject you and send you back to find something else no I'm going to say okay you can afford to buy that that's within our price range so I will fail to reject the item you choose to purchase so in my box C I'm going to come over here and write fail to reject H naught and notice in this case that it ends with H0. It always needs to end with H0. And now I'm ready to write my final conclusion. So I go to my flow chart and I first decide that H1 is my claim. Then I decide of the two choices from there that I failed to reject H0. So I know that it will start off with there is not sufficient sample evidence to support the claim that, and then I'll finish it off. There is not sufficient sample evidence to support the claim that the mean height of LBCC male students is different from 69 inches. So remember, this beginning piece I just took word for word right off of the flow chart, but then for the rest of it, I need it to be a coherent sentence and I want to be sure to include the content, so that's why I was sure to mention that it was LBCC male students. But the key is that we're talking about the population parameter for mean. The claim is that it's different, and specifically, it's different from 69 inches.